Alrighty, so I'm finally gonna make um, a top 10 list for my least favorite roller coasters to date. So I just wanna stress very clearly right now that I have not been to a ton of theme parks yet. So my top 10, or I guess least favorite 10 coasters in the world list is going to be pretty mediocre. It's not going to be literally the worst coasters in the world. So please, right now, just take that um, in. This is my current least favorite roller coasters that I've been on. And I also want to stress that I am not a hardcore roller coaster enthusiast. And um, sometimes the uh, the high thrill roller coasters aren't exactly my favorite. So when you're watching an Amusement Insiders video, uh, please understand that we are more of a general public channel and uh, more of a theme park fan based um, channel versus a roller coaster fan based channel. So please take our opinions with a grain of salt and don't get too triggered by our opinions. Um, we're not your average roller coaster enthusiast that really knows their things about roller coasters. We're more of a theme park based fan page fan channel. And um, sometimes we go after roller, co roller coasters that aren't as high thrill and more the experience overall. So if you're watching our channel, just please remember that. Um, and just take any of our top 10 lists or least favorite lists um, and even our opinions with a grain of salt. And hopefully if you're watching us, you already know that um, and we're never going to shove our opinions down your throat. So right now, I guess I'm going to invite you to comment down below your least favorite coasters, maybe your top or least three favorite coasters in the world down below in the comment section. Um, or even feel free to drag me as I go on through this video. But nonetheless, um, I've been to a lot of parks this year, so I decided now might be the right time to start these lists. So each year, obviously, I'll update it, and you'll see how my opinions change um, as I go on. Anyways, number 10, my 10th least favorite roller coaster in the world is Wonder Mountain's Guardian. So a lot of you might already be like, how is Wonder Mountain's Guardian one of your least favorite roller coasters? Or is it even a roller coaster? It's only got a little tiny outdoor section that goes downhill and is powered by gravity for a mere short, like what, 10 seconds, not even. And then the rest of it's literally just a dark ride with a drop track finish. I guess I should have put a spoiler alert there for a quick second. But um, yeah, nonetheless, it's not that great of an attraction. The outdoor roller coaster section is not shaped correctly, so it's very bumpy. Um, and then once you get in, it's not even a good dark ride. So it's definitely my one of my least favorite roller coasters I've been on. But I'm going to put it at number 10 because it's not the worst. Coming in at number 9 is a Wild Beast over at Canada's Wonderland. So you're going to notice a common theme with this. Canada's Wonderland is my home park, so a lot of the coasters on this list are just going to happen to be Canada's Wonderland roller coasters, and the more parks I go to, it's going to increase. Um, anyways, Wild Beast at Canada's Wonderland is a old, very old wooden coaster for the park. It is one of the original coasters at the park, um, and uh, it's pretty uncomfortable. I do have to say it is slightly getting better, and due to a recent experience I had on one of the other wooden coasters that we'll get to very shortly, um, it has moved up my list in terms of least favorite roller coasters at Canada's Wonderland. That is why it is ranking at number nine um, in my total 10 least favorite roller coasters. I keep getting caught in these tongue twisters. Um, it is really uncomfortable, to be honest. Um, but if you sit in the right seat, so we notice that if you sit in the front car of each train or each compartment, um, it is less uncomfortable than the back one. So the wheels happen to be more uncomfortable on the back seats of each compartment. Um, but this section and some of the sections, whenever it turns, are extremely uncomfortable. You bump into um, your friends. We've heard moments of people bumping heads on this ride. But um, I definitely think with improvements going on, and I am hearing that there is more retracking going on this off season, and they completely redid the lift um, the last season that just flew by, um, it is definitely becoming more comfortable and more tolerable, and I don't see this coaster going anywhere anytime soon. So this is why this ranks at number nine of my least favorite roller coasters that I've been on to date. Coming in at number eight is Vortex over at Carowind. So I know a lot of people um, are either a fan of this roller coaster or not a fan of this roller coaster. Um, this is just my opinion. I'm not here to trigger anyone. I had a really just a bad experience with this roller coaster overall. The team that operated this roller coaster literally took 10 minutes. I'm not kidding. You think I'm kidding. They literally took 10 minutes to load a train um, and get it out of the station. 
And on top of that, I was, luckily, I was with someone that warned me about this. So they warned me that it was super bumpy and I braced. So I actually found the first part of this roller coaster right here not to be that bad because I was expecting, expecting it to be uncomfortable and I braced for it. But right here, somewhere along this section right here, something happened to me and I got cut on the restraint. It was really awkward. I, be, I don't even remember what happened, but I remember coming off bleeding off my hand and I don't remember how or what, but I remember it being in that section because I remember looking down and being feeling like a pain in my hand and I came off bleeding and it's just, it was uncomfortable. It's not, it's super short. It's not worth the ride. It literally like, in my opinion, like it's one of those coasters that I probably will never do again. I've been on it, done it, whatever. Uh, <laughs> coming in at number seven is uh, Time Warp. So a lot of people are probably like, wow, this is pretty high on your least favorite coaster list. I was expecting it to be one of your absolute least favorite roller coasters. And to be honest, the more I rode it this season, the less I hated it, as odd as that sounds. Um, it definitely was, at the beginning of the season, one of my least favorite roller coasters I'd been on. And then the more I rode it, the more I learned how to ride it. And that's going to be a common theme in the roller coaster community. And that's a lot of advice that other roller coaster enthusiasts give us. Um, a good group of enthusiasts that I really like um, are Savage Coasters and Ohio Valley Coasters. They give us really good advice in terms of when we go to a new park or we Craig and I happen to not like a roller coaster that um, other people like. It happens to be how you ride the roller coasters. So the more you learn how to ride roller coasters, the better you are at going, <laughs> the better of a chance you're going to have at having a comfortable ride. And this is one of those rides. So as long as you brace and hold yourself, you're going to have a comfortable ride on this ride. There are still uncomfortable moments, and it's definitely not one of those rides that are amazing, especially when you compare it to other flying coaster models like B&M out there. Anyways, this is a roller coaster that I can definitely see leaving the park sometime soon at Canada's Wonderland, um, but we'll have to see. Coming in at number six, oh boy. Wildcat. Wildcat at Hershey Park was so uncomfortable. And the funny thing is, is it's made by a great manufacturer. It just so happens to be one of, and again, correct me down below if I ever get anything wrong. I believe this is the first um, roller coaster that this manufacturer uh, produced. And that is why it's probably so uncomfortable. And it's also super old. And from what I understand, there's been hardly any retracking done to the roller coaster. So uh, maybe it's due for an RMC. I have no idea. Maybe GCI is going to come in and retrack it completely as well. Who knows? All I know is, boy, was I trying to survive through this whole ride experience. <laughs> was one of the most uncomfortable experiences ever. I remember Craig and I literally making the weirdest sounds going through this as like you could literally hear us bracing. Like when someone, a human is struggling to get into a comfortable position or like bracing for pain or trying to like get into a position that you're going to least be hurt. Like that was our ride experience. Like you could literally hear us trying desperately um, to not get hurt on Wildcat over at Hershey Park. Um, but yeah, it's definitely up there. That's why it comes in at number six for me on my least favorite coasters um, that I've been on so far. Um, how are you guys doing? Uh, where are you guys sitting in terms of my opinion so far? I can't wait to read these comments um, as I go through this video. So again, comment down below what your least favorite coasters are in the world that you've ridden so far. And feel free to drag me. Feel free to be like, dude, you just need to like learn how to ride it better. Anyways, coming in at number five is Flight Deck at Canada's Wonderland. Again, this is a coaster that I think some of you might be like, wow, I was expecting this to be up in the top three. So Flight Deck is a coaster that Craig and I learned how to ride this season. We did, I think we did like 40 or 50 rides on this thing. I completely forget. We did a ride challenge where our viewers, like the more they shared a video, the more we had to ride Flight Deck. And the video got like a hundred and something shares. So we ended up having to ride it. I think it was 50 times. And we learned how to ride it. So our favorite seat on Flight Deck is the back. So what you want to do on this coaster to have a somewhat, again, keyword, somewhat comfortable ride on Flight Deck is lock yourself in as tight as possible. Get that restraint down to its very last click and sit in the very back row and brace. Ride's not that bad. Anyways, Coming in at number four is the Bat at Canada's Wonderland. Yes, a lot of these coasters are at Canada's Wonderland, as I said earlier. Again, this list will start to change each year that I go and explore different parks. So the Bat at Canada's Wonderland, some of you might get triggered because I know that in terms of general public, this is somewhat a favorite ride. A lot of general public really like this ride. So I apologize if anyone is super upset about me ranking the Bat um, at number four. But again, this ride going forwards, 
piece of pie. No pain, slight head banging here and there. But again, what older coaster doesn't provide that? You just got a brace. So going forward, this ride is totally okay and it wouldn't make this list. But again, I hardly consider these roller coasters. I know I'm triggering coaster enthusiasts by saying that. That's why it's ranking so high as well. I think it's like a roller coaster flat ride is what I would call it. Um, but it does count as a credit. It is a roller coaster. And the part that makes it super unbearable for me is going backwards for some reason. This vertical loop right here going backwards, I like black out every time now. And I did not used to do that. I've just noticed recently that it's super uncomfortable and it hurts my head a lot to ride this roller coaster backwards just during that vertical loop. The rest of the ride is fine. It's the vertical loop for some reason. I don't know how to explain it. It's not bracing. It's literally just in terms of blacking out. I know I'm not the only one. I know Craig had blacks out too, so it's not age or anything. Um, but nonetheless, again, I guess we just got to <laughs> avoid this ride at this point. Um, you're not missing much. Most boomerangs are the same. The magnetic brake boomerangs tend to be a little bit better. Anyways, this is where you guys are going to get triggered. So coming in at number three is a very interesting story. Green Lantern over at Great Adventure. I had the worst experience on this roller coaster. Um, I don't even remember if I had head banging. If I did, wasn't even a problem because I had leg pains like there was no tomorrow. I was like banging my feet against the bottom of this roller coaster cart trying to get blood flow in my legs to a better state. I just remember I was panicking through the whole ride. I was having the worst experience ever. My legs were hurting. Um, and then I got off the roller coaster and I had like these blood stains all through my leg. Um, if I have a picture, I'll post it on here somewhere. It was horrible. Like I had to go to first aid immediately after getting off this ride. Blood was starting to spread through my legs. It looks like blood vessels popped. Um, which I guess could be a compliment to the roller coaster. It's super high thrill. It's got a lot of forces. A lot of enthusiasts love that, which is probably why a lot of enthusiasts actually do love this roller coaster. But I hated it. I'm sorry. A roller coaster that makes me that uncomfortable is not an experience that I want to partake in. And I will never ride this ride again because, again, I don't know if I'm going to die. I don't know. There was so much blood spreading on both my legs. Anyone there with me saw it. It was scary. We thought it was a rash. We thought something happened. But no, it was just too many G-forces and the blood vessels in my legs popped. All right. Coming in at number two is Mindbuster. If any of you watched my videos throughout the season, I fell in love with Mindbuster. I really did. We rode it in the, if you ride it in the middle seat, so each little train compartment has three seats, um, you want to sit in the middle. That'll be a comfortable ride. You will have zero pain riding this roller coaster, and you'll hear other people crying in pain or moaning or groaning. But it's fun. Ride in the middle seat, and this would not make my top 10 or least favorite coasters in the world list. I swear by that. There's a reason it is at number two suddenly out of nowhere. I rode this roller coaster at the very last day of operations at Canada's Wonderland, and boy, I made a huge mistake. Um, I sat in the very back seat, a wheel seat is what you call it, and um, there's this dip down under a bridge after the turnaround on Mindbuster. I'll point it out when we get there. Um, so actually, I'll hold this story off. But there's a dip after that, and I did something to my back. And ever since then, um, I've been having some back problems, and I'm not happy about it. So I will not be riding this roller coaster unless I'm sitting in a middle seat ever again. Um, it, it, to be honest, it's, it's, it's really fun though. Like a night ride on this middle seat, like super fun. You got to check it out, sit in a middle seat. And you, again, you'll have zero problems. So right about here is where the problems begin. The ride is super comfortable. No problems whatsoever until right about now. So as soon as this ride dips down, there is a moment right here that is just, you, you can see like, it's like a pothole or something on the wooden coaster. It just like, and if you're on a wheel seat, it like bangs your back and boy and the fact that you know i'm like approaching 30 years of age doesn't help as well um i my back got pulled and ever since then i'll have like a day where the same spot that i got hurt on mind buster starts groaning in pain if i do something wrong like so I, i've been getting that checked out and working on that i'm not a fan of this anymore because of that moment but it's not too bad a ride if you sit in the middle seat my least favorite roller coaster in the world is nighthawk at canada's wonderland or not Candace one and Carolyn's Nighthawk at Carolyn's is my least favorite roller coaster to date. And a lot of people are going to be like, why? 
Um, so for any of you that joined me um, on our videos when we went to Dollywood and Carowinds, I described this roller coaster as literally surviving a car crash. Um, so the beginning of the ride is not so bad. So these moments right here, not so bad, super fun, super unique experience. You know, you're laying on your back, but then it turns you um, into a flying position. It's fun and all until you get to the corkscrews. Uh, I just, <laughs> I remember not expecting it at all. And I think they're coming up right now. Like these moments right here, it literally sounded and felt like, oh, sorry, not here. It's coming up. Um, it sounded and felt like a car accident. I don't know how to describe it. It was super painful. These moments right here. I did not like it. I never wanted to do it again. I remember getting off just completely like, what was that? What was that? Um, definitely goes down as one of my least favorite experiences on a roller coaster. Um, but yeah, I'm not too picky. Again, we have very unique opinions. I can definitely admit that. And uh, hopefully I didn't trigger too many people. Again, we are a very general public-based theme park channel. So anytime I'm giving an opinion on a roller coaster, don't take it too seriously. Um, we're not trying to shove our opinions down your throat or make you believe what we're saying. Uh, we're very unique. We're very different. But hey, if we were all the same and had the same opinions on YouTube, would we be worth watching? No. Like, ha watching people with different opinions is some of the reasons... There are different people on YouTube. If we all had the same opinions, there would be zero point to having different channels out there. So hopefully we cater to, you know, some of you out there. And hopefully a lot of people like watching us because we have different opinions. Maybe we open up a different perspective. You know, maybe a lot of people who hate certain roller coasters end up liking them because we end up liking them or point out the good in them. And then maybe some people sit there and go, wow, OK, I didn't even think about that. Maybe general public don't like that uh, uncomfortableness on that roller coaster. But nonetheless, I did want to give a shout out. So two parks that did not make the list at all um, are Dollywood and Cedar Point. So, I mean, considering those two parks do have older roller, co roller coasters as well, that's a compliment. Like you, both those parks did not even come anywhere close to making my least favorite roller coaster list. Not even some of their older attractions. So um, huge congratulations to you two parks. I literally sat there and I was like, I want to get a roller coaster from every park on this list. And I couldn't. I could not, no matter how hard I tried, get a roller coaster from Dollywood or Cedar Point onto my least favorite coaster list, um, period. That's just the T. So <laughs> I could not, no matter what I did. So a huge congratulations to you. Um, Skyrush was a roller coaster that I personally didn't have a good experience with. The restraint hurt me um, a lot. I found it to be extre like, uh, extremely uncomfortable for the amount of thrill that it provided. But when I sat down and really digested it because I, I was trying to get it on this list I said it's just not fair to Sky Rush for me to put it on um, my least favorite coaster list just based off of me having an uncomfortable experience um, I have a lot of friends in the roller coaster community I know a lot of people love it so for me to sit here and kind of argue that Sky Rush was one of my least favorite coasters just didn't sit or feel right to me I personally don't like the restraints on the coaster but the roller coaster shouldn't be solely judged based off of a restraint um, so I'm going to hold off on that. I do have strong opinions about Sky Rush, but I didn't feel fair putting it on this list um, fully, and I couldn't support myself doing that. So if I don't feel comfortable doing something, I'm not going to do it. But I did want to provide some feedback on the roller coaster, um, so I'm not being like hypocritical or hiding my opinions from you guys. But nonetheless, hope you guys enjoyed this. Can't wait to read the comments down below. Um, feel free to head on over to our Patreon, Amusement Insiders on Patreon, um, and become a Patreon for a dollar a month for some exclusive content that's coming. Um, and you guys are going to get to experience um, some of our newest content we're working on for the uh, new year uh, before anyone else. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys. Hopefully you liked the video. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this video for others to enjoy. Have a good weekend, guys. Bye.